Hello and welcome to this My Theme Shop video screencast. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the settings tab in the WordPress dashboard. Now you're going to find this on the left hand side here and you want to hover over settings and then click on general. So this brings us to the general settings page where you can set a couple of options to do with your site. For example, you've got the site title and as well as the tagline and you can use this to explain in a couple of words what your site is about. You've got your WordPress address. This is the URL of your WordPress installation as well as the site address, um, the URL here, which is the URL you can enter if you want your site homepage to be different from your WordPress installation directory. And just to note, you should only change the WordPress address, the URL, if you know what you are doing with this um, as without moving the install files as well. That's actually going to break your site but you can enter a different address for your site address um, if you want your homepage to be in a different place from your WordPress installation directory. So you might want to have mythemeshop.com slash blog, for example, to be your homepage. I'm just going to leave that as it is though. And moving on, we've got the email address um, and this is the email address used for admin purposes, such as new user notification. We've also got membership and here we can tick whether anyone can register or not. Um, this will allow users to sign up and to register for our site. And you can also set the new user default role. You'll see default this is on subscriber, which is just going to allow users to log in, but it's not going to allow them to post or edit anything. We can see from this drop down there are a couple of different options here, as well as subscriber, which doesn't let you post. We've got contributor, where uh, users will have to get approval before their posts are published authors who can publish their own post, editors who can edit other people's posts as well as publish their own post, and the administrator who's able to access the whole of the site um, and make any advanced changes such as to your themes or plugins. You're probably going to want to have this set by default if you have anyone to register to subscriber or contributor so that you don't get users being able to post to your site or edit your site by just signing up. Also got the time zone here and here you can select a city that is near you in order to get the local time displaying as well as the date format and the time format as well here and you've got some documentation on date and time formatting and if you just load that up that will take you to the WordPress codex where you can find out how all of these different stylings work as well as how to enter custom time and date. You can select which day the week starts on so you've just got an option of all the days of the week there. We've also got the site language and you can use this drop down to select between all of these different languages that WordPress is available in. I'm just going to change mine to French here. If we now just save these changes, then we're going to see that the options have been changed and the site is now loading in French. I'm just going to change that back into English and save that again. But this just shows you how easy it is to change the language that your site is using. The next tab is writing. Here you can change any of the settings to do with writing, so that's formatting as well as publishing on your WordPress powered site. So first we have some formatting options. You can choose whether to convert emoticons such as the smiley face to image graphics when they are displayed on your site. And you can also choose whether you want WordPress to automatically correct any invalid nested XHTML. We've got the default post category and you can just use this drop down to choose between any of the categories that you have on your site and select that as the default post category. We've also got the default post format so you can again use this drop down to choose between any of the post formats that you have on your site if you have any at all. You might want to just leave that as standard. You can also choose whether to publish via email. Um, WordPress has this feature which will allow you to post to an email address and then any email received by that email address is going to automatically be posted on your site as a standard post. To do this you need to set up an email account which you'll want to keep the address secret and this email needs to have POP3 access so Gmail will probably be fine for this. Any mail received at this email address is going to be posted as a post onto your site, so it's an excellent idea to keep the address very secret. And you're going to see WordPress has some random strings it suggests you use as the email address, so you can just sign up to a new Gmail account using any of these random strings. Make sure you keep a note of the email address, of course. You can then set up the mail server, login name and password and any email received to this email address will now be posted to your site and you can also set the default mail category. Again, just use this drop down to choose between any of the categories that you have installed. 
You also have the update services here. When you publish a new post, WordPress will automatically notify um, the following site update services. So it's just going to notify sites that you have a new post published. You probably want to leave this as it is with Pingomatic the only one selected. If you make any changes, you want to save them. And next tab is reading. Here you can choose um, a couple of options to do with site reading options. And for example, we have the front page displays and you can either choose between your latest posts, which will just be your standard WordPress homepage displaying your latest posts, or you can choose a static page um, for your front page and for the post page. You might want to do this if you have a theme which requires a homepage page template, you just need to set that up and then publish and you would then be able to choose here. And you can also choose um, the same for the post page. If you have a page template such as blog, you might want to set this here. So I might set my post page as blog, but my front page, I might want just to have this um, sample page. And you can use that to display static content to customize the look of your site. You can choose how many posts are displayed on your blog page. And you can just enter a number here in order to select that. So that's how many posts display on a single page, as well as how many posts you want to display on your syndication feed. And as well as for your RSS feed, whether to show the full text or just a summary, um, which is going to encourage users to click through to your site by only displaying a small excerpt. You've also got search engine visibility, and here you can choose whether you want to discourage search engines from indexing your site, um, and then it is up to search engines such as Google or Bing to honor this request, but it's not recommended that you do this as this will stop visitors finding your site via search. As always, you want to save your changes that you make. And the next tab we're gonna have a look at is the discussion tab. Here you can choose the options for any discussion that you want to have on your site. You've got an option to attempt to notify any blogs linked to from the article. So having this option ticks is very much recommended and it's going to um, let other blogs that you link to know that you have linked to them. And this can encourage discussion as well as visibility of your blog. You can also allow link notifications from other blogs on your new articles. So that will um, let you know that other blogs have linked to you and um, are going to display that as a comment. And you can choose whether to approve that comment. You can allow people to post comments on new articles just by having this box ticked. And you can override these settings for individual articles. You've also got some other comment settings here, um, such as whether you want the user to fill out a name and email address so that they can comment where well, the users must be registered and logged in to comment. And you can set whether you want to close comments on articles older than a certain number of days. And this is set by default to two weeks if you have that selected. You might want to do this in order to keep discussion fresh and stop spam. You can choose whether you want to enable threaded or nested comments. Um, and you can choose how many levels deep you want to have these. So these are comment replies and you can control how deep the conversations can go on your blog. You can choose whether to break comments into um, pages if you have many comments on a single page by having this box ticked. You can choose um, how many comments to display per page using this number here and choose whether to have the first or last page as default and whether to have older or newer comments at the top of each page. You can choose whether you want an email notification anytime anyone posts a comment or anytime a comment is held for moderation. And before a comment appears, you can also choose whether a comment must be manually approved or if the author must have a previously approved comment. Doing this, um, the second option might just cut down on the moderation work that you have on your site. You can automatically put comments in the moderation queue if they contain um, a certain number of links. So two or more is the default. And you can also choose whether to can put a comment in the moderation queue if it contains certain words. For example, if you put press in the moderation queue, so you want to have these one per line, you can use words and IP addresses. Um, if you have the word press, then if someone comments using the word WordPress, because press is part of that word, that's also going to put that into the moderation queue. So if there are any sensitive words that you are particularly aware of, you might want to put these into the comment moderation queue just by putting one word per line here. You've also got the comment blacklist. This is very much the same. Um, any words that uh, people use, if you enter these one per line here, then um, these are automatically going to put the comment to be marked as spam. 
So you might want to put any rude words or any curse words um, into the box here, and this will automatically set them as spam. Next option is avatars. An avatar is an image that follows you along your blog, appearing beside your name when you comment on avatar-enabled sites. You can select your own Gravatar by going to gravatar.com, that's G-R-A-V-A-T-A-R.com, and signing up for your own Gravatar, and this will be linked to your email address. So you can choose whether to have these on or not, and what the uh, maximum rating um, should be for all of the Gravatars. You can select a default Gravatar for a user who don't have their own, and you can either display a logo or a generated one based on their email address. So you can use these radio buttons here in order to choose um, the default Gravatar for users who do not have their own. So I might want to set mine to a custom Gravatar, which is the My Theme Shop logo. As always, make sure you save your changes when you're done. And next we want to head to Media, which is the next setting along. Here we've got a couple of options to do with the media uploading and image sizing for our WordPress blog. So with image sizes, here we've got the different sizes WordPress is going to generate when we're adding images to our WordPress blog. Here we have thumbnail size, and you can see by default this is set to 150 by 150, but you can have this to any number that you like. You're gonna see here we have this tick box to choose whether to crop thumbnails to exact dimensions, because normally thumbnails aren't proportional, but we can have this to set this to exactly 150 by 150. With medium and large, these are only max width and height, so um, these aren't going to be proportional in the same way that thumbnails are, but you can set these to any numbers that you like to suit your blog. You can also choose whether to upload your files into month and year based folders, which is just going to keep them better organized. As always, you'll want to make sure you save your changes once you are done. And the next option to have a look at is permalinks. So with permalinks, we have um, different options for how URLs are displayed with your WordPress powered site. First, we have um, common settings, and these are for posts and pages and how the uh, URL structure is displayed. So you'll see the default is to have a question mark, a P, and then the post ID. Now this is not particularly uh, readable and not particularly search engine friendly. You'll probably want to have your URLs set to um, simply post name, which is going to have the uh, root URL, so mythemeshop.com forward slash, and then you've got the title of the post. So sample post or sample page. that will just have your page title there. It's much more readable, much more easy for humans to understand, and much more search engine friendly. But you can also choose to have the day and the name included in here, as well as the year, as well as the month, name, and the year, or have a numeric system, um, so slash archives, slash, um, and then a number there. You can also choose a custom structure, and if you head over to the WordPress codex, you're going to find out what the options available here are. An optional thing here is to enter custom structures for your category and tag URLs. So you can replace slash category or slash tags with something else such as slash topics um, in order to change the category base here. If you leave these blank, this is just going to use the default, so which is slash category and slash tag. But if I wanted to change it from slash category to slash topics, I would just enter topics here. And um, if I wanted to change the tags, I would just enter my text there. I'm actually just going to leave that as the default, and as always, make sure you save your changes once you are done. So I've just flicked back to the general settings here because that actually concludes our look through the settings. You'll see we do have two final uh, tabs in the settings tab, but these are actually for plugins. Um, so you, if you have any additional plugins installed, such as WP Subscribe Pro or WP Review, both are available from my theme shop. These are going to display here, and here you're going to be able to change the options to do with those plugins. So if you've installed the plugin and are looking for their settings, you might find them either um, with their own tab here, such as My WP Backup, or under Settings, so we have WP Subscribe Pro and WP Review here as well. So that's all there is to it. That's your look at settings, and this actually concludes our look through the basic settings of WordPress which should have given you a really good basis for going out there and really making the most of your WordPress powered site. In the next section of videos, we're going to be looking at more advanced settings and I do very much hope you'll join us for those. I hope these videos have been really helpful for you and thank you very much for watching.